Right, so welcome to Middlesbrough and to another cheap house video. I've seen some property online that's going for really, really cheap here. Around 10 grand starting price auction and they look in an absolute state. So I'm really excited to see what they're like. Now, I did just drive like past the centre and a lot of it looks boarded up. There looks like a lot of boarded up stuff there, but I'm doing this series at the moment called The Death of the High Street. So I'll come back and I'll do a video about there. And there's also a seaside town called Red Car nearby where we'll go check out as well. If you want to see that series, it's called The Death of the High Street. Have a look on my channel. And look at this here already. See that here, already just a house, completely open, there's no door in it and it's absolutely trashed on the inside, fuck. So also I feel like this North Face black and yellow orangey jacket's become iconic to my videos because it's getting warmer I'm thinking oh I can't wear this all the time but look what I found in a second hand shop for £10 wandering turnips summer tea with the same colourway right but back to the video anyway so yeah already I've seen some proper bad houses in a real state and the first one that I'm viewing is on this road here somewhere so we'll have a quick wander down this road and see what that's like on the front Yeah, so we're already in this particular area just outside the city centre called South Bank, seeing loads, loads of boarded up properties. So Middlesbrough's actually barely got a history. So at the start of the 1800s, the area we now know as Middlesbrough was just rural farmland and it had a population of about 25. And then it was throughout that 19th century when the industry boomed here. And you can see when you're driving in, it just screams industry, them big fat chimneys, billowing smoke, and loads of industrial stuff everywhere. But yeah, it was iron, steel, and ships that gave Middlesbrough its rapid growth, particularly a kind of iron called pig iron, also known as crude iron. So this place became known as the smelting center of the world and got the nickname Ironopolis for its dominance in the iron industry. So there is absolutely loads of boarded up ones just near this house I'm viewing soon. We better get there actually, but just loads more on this street as well. Friendly people though, just got chatting to someone, this woman, and I said, oh, I'm looking at a house, it's on for 10 grand. She went, you'll be mad to live around here, but what you can do is you can buy it and you can rent it out to me, I need a place. So, yeah. Right, so here's the listing online for this property. As you can see here, it's on for a guide price of £10,000. Now, it was actually the house to the left of these two, I realised when the estate agent showed up. So let's go inside and have a look round. I kid you not as well, I asked the lady when she got here, I said, oh, what's the area like? And she said, well, my friend's a policeman and I actually messaged him saying I was doing a viewing and he said, oh, do you want me to swing by and just make sure everything's all right? So really not selling it. And just look at all that black mould down there. There were loads of flies in the house. The room was just trashed. This living room, I guess you'd call it, was just trashed. The stairs had all been put through there. And then through here into the kitchen, which was way worse got so bad coming into here. Now the lights weren't working, so I had my torch on, but there was just glass everywhere. The cabinets were just ripped apart. There was mold growing everywhere you looked. It was really, really bad in here. 
And going through the kitchen, you've got the bathroom down at the very end through here. And again, this room was just trashed as well, just in a real bad way. Again, just glass everywhere. I was actually a bit worried walking through here because there was so much glass. So I think I actually need to invest in a good pair of boots when I'm checking out these properties that are this knackered because I really don't want to damage my feet. There was a bit of a hole in the ceiling there. And then coming back through the kitchen, just seeing how trashed it was. I also think I want to get a mask as well when I'm looking at these properties because that smell of mold is just so horrible. There was a little room down there as well, which is just full of mold. Now, there was a room over here which was a bit messy on the floor, but the walls weren't in too bad shape, really. Then coming through here, you had a ladder up to the loft. I did manage to get a look up there in a bit. Then through here where there were some floorboards missing here. Now I've learned from people watching my other vids that this is where copper gets nicked. So people break in, they lift up the floorboards and nick all the copper. But a decent sized room to be fair here. And then looking up to the ceiling, just a bit of peeling wallpaper, but it's actually in all right shape. There was one more room here, which was tiny, not even a box room. You wouldn't fit a bed in here. It's more of a walk-in wardrobe. Big hole in the ceiling there. And then just a quick look into the loft, which was so filthy up here. Could have done with a mask for this bit. But yeah, a bit of space up there. Then back downstairs. So yeah, that first house, wow. But she really didn't sell it, did she? She made me really not want to buy it. Do you know when this shut down, mate? Oh. Really? Yeah. How long are we talking? Five years. Five years? God, yeah, it's got to be. Was it a good pub? It wasn't bad. But, uh, like, you, you've got the Albion on the corner now. You've got the feeders up there. That's obvious. That's it, all rest gone. Two clubs. Is that it? All rest gone. That was a pub, commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. There's a pub in every corner, in here. Yeah, yeah. Changing uh, times now. Oh, gone, mate. Yeah. So yeah, an abandoned pub there, the Princess Alice. The guy said it'd been shut down for about five years. He said they're all gone round here now. I know he said we wouldn't go to the high street, but this isn't really the high street. This is just the area where these cheap houses are, not Middlesbrough Central. I think the social club there as well shut down. I think that maybe that's what that guy was saying as well. You know, what's this? Yeah, so these buildings are just completely derelict. Left empty, and that one there just walked right inside and upstairs, looked like there'd been someone sleeping there. Had his snacks of cheap cider and chips. But yeah, wow. Well. Another huge building here boarded up. I think maybe this must have been a pub. Jeez, that roof's completely burnt out. So yeah, another massive building here, completely boarded up. Let's walk around it. As you can see, the roof's burnt out in one section. But this is kind of what's surrounding these cheap houses. Just like such derelict buildings. It's not even that far from the centre of Middlesbrough either. Whoa. Looks proper boarded up this place, but let's just see if we can get the camera in through somewhere.
don't know if you heard that, but the guy I got chatting to then just said, that place, yeah, it was arson. And the guy who did it is in jail. But apparently he's done it before, burning down places, burning down a place in Newcastle as well. Right, so this is the area for the next house that we're viewing. About 10 minute drive from where I just was and already boarded up. Just got chatting to a nice fella then who uh, has some property uh, around here and up in Hartlepool and he said oh I've got a, a house that's been completely burnt out by one of his tenants and he said give me a call we'll go up and have a look at it at some point so nice one to you mate um, we'll go check that out soon right so this is the road with the next view in it's 38 Dorothy Street, here. Got about half an hour, I think, before the viewing here. So yeah, I was saying earlier about the dominant production of steel coming from Middlesbrough, giving it that nickname, Ironopolis. But it was that, it was that prominence that made it the first target for bombing in World War II. And it did, it got bombed really badly. Right, so here's the listing online for this property. And I was really excited to see this one because it's got that £10,000 guide price, but it also looked trashed on the pictures and it lived up to expectation. It was one of the worst houses I've ever seen. So let's go inside and have a little look round. And as you can see, just walking inside straight away, it is just a rubbish tip in here. There is stuff everywhere and the smell was disgusting. It blows my mind at how little effort is put in to try and make some houses sellable. And I've seen a lot of houses and this was the worst I've ever seen. Now it's clearly not the people that have been living here that's trying to sell this house. It's someone else, but wow. I was actually struggling walking around this place. And at the same time, I kept looking down thinking, what the hell am I gonna stand on? And again, I was really wishing that I'd got some stronger boots to walk around this place in because there was just glass everywhere. I had no idea what I were gonna find on this floor. It was crazy. Now through to the kitchen. That was your living room, but don't get your hopes up. It just gets worse. Look at the state of this place. It's actually pretty similar to the kitchen that I saw earlier on, and I thought that one was bad, but coming in here, and again, the smell was just disgusting. I could have done with a gas mask walking around this place. Things just pulled off everywhere, black mold growing. It was really, really foul. There was a massive hole in the ceiling there where it was literally just coming down. I actually completely forgot about that when I was walking around upstairs. I had no idea where that bit was. It could have just fallen through. Then back to the floor here, just totally trashed, walls are gross. Took a little look in the oven, Ugh, horrible. And then coming through to the bathroom, which again, like the other house, was just at the back of the kitchen. And again with this house, like it's actually hard to see how bad the actual house is because it's covered in so much stuff and rubbish. But I think the actual internal side of the house isn't great either. But just that immediate effect of seeing all the rubbish and the smell and the mould, Oh, it's absolutely awful. Anyway, let's head back through the house, back through the lovely kitchen and check out the upstairs area in this house. Just got to make our way across this floor first and avoid that hole when we do go upstairs. There was also this little cupboard room downstairs, which, yep, you guessed it, was full of shit. Then we made our way back through the hallway and headed up the stairs. And as I was walking up the stairs, I saw a needle on the floor. Now, I can only assume, but I don't think that it had been used to deliver a COVID vaccine. Now, coming up here and the smell was getting more and more intense. It was horrible. And this first room up here, again, just completely full of stuff. Glass all over the floor, things everywhere. It was actually hard to explore this room, really. I actually had to leave because the smell was getting so foul, but you could see there was mould all over the walls as well there. Then coming through to this room, which was just as bad, and the smell was still there, to be fair. But yeah, there was just stuff everywhere. It was totally trashed. And I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but down there, they are just bugs over everything. 
ugh, dead bugs. But I was starting to feel really, really sick at this point. The smell was just so, so foul. But I only had one more room to go and check out. So I persevered and went on to have a look. And it was the bedroom. And it was just, again, in an absolute state. So, so disgusting. Cigarette butts all over the floor. Mold stuff everywhere and what's really depressing is looking through all the footage that i got i was kind of noticing that there might have been a kid as well at some point living here now it's one thing for some adults to be living in this squalor but putting a kid into it is just so inhumane but yeah this is the bedroom where you've got everything you need you've got your kettle your microwave your toaster here's just an example of the actual internal structural damage of the house so beyond all that stuff that you're looking at the immediate you see Another room here, little loft above it, not much really up there though. And another look at the walls where beyond all that stuff that you see, just mouldy and crumbling. So that house I've just been in, it was absolutely disgusting. I think that might be one of the worst houses, one of the worst cheap houses that I've um, I've seen on my property tours. The smell, ugh, still thinking about it, oh my God. So there we go, some of the cheap houses of Middlesbrough, and they were bad, they were, they were really, really bad. Also, them other buildings, them abandoned buildings that I could just walk into and the other house I just got into, nuts. Yeah, so it's clear there's like a lot of crime in these areas, or the areas where them houses are, just because there's so much vandalism, like that burnt out building that we found. But yeah, let me know if you know any other reasons why, why those areas of Middlesbrough are so cheap. I come to these places and I don't always have an idea in my head beforehand i like trying to build a picture from when i get here by speaking to people and wandering around but yeah do let me know if you know why middlesbrough has super cheap property for sale and then as well i was just driving through the the main center down the high road then and there's so many boarded up buildings abandoned stuff so i think we're definitely gonna have to come back here for an episode of the death of the high street because it was just so bleak driving through there and down here as well apparently there is a, a poem written on the wall so let's go and try and find that. So yeah, this is a poem by Ian Horn, which is painted on a wall. It says, Where alchemists were born below Cleveland's hills, a giant blue dragonfly across the tees reminds us every night we built the world. Every metropolis came from Ionopolis.